Welcome to a special edition of the Referrals Podcast. Introducing our new Daily Dose. We've assembled the ultimate crisis response team for your business. Generous leaders from around the globe teaming up to teach, guide, and lead you through this time of isolation and quarantine. Now, let's meet your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey, everybody, it's Michael J. Mayer with another edition of, are you kidding me? The Daily Dose, your daily dose of positivity and productivity. What if the most successful people in the world had a secret and they wanted to keep it away from you? They were not going to tell you this secret because it's so simple and yet produces such amazing results. Would you be mad at those successful people? Well, guess what? Be mad no more because we're going to disclose one of the secrets that makes the most successful people in the world successful. That's today. Are you guys ready for that? I'm ready for that. So now, here's the thing, right? So announcements. Number one, create and lead your Facebook group. If you're not doing that, what the heck? Come on, right? The second thing, your five-star method. Five steps to attracting referrals. It's just five steps to attract referrals. Would you do those five steps if you knew it would attract a referral? I would hope so, you know? So here's the thing. Step one, is identify a positive person. Isn't that great anyway? Isn't that what the quarantine has really helped us do? Is kind of like eliminate, decimate, emancipate, liberate the negative Nellies and the Debbie Downers. While on the flip side, we've, you know what? We figured out who the positive pal and the Paul, positive Pauls are, right? And the positive Polly. And here's the thing, right? Then you're gonna make a, have a call with them or you're gonna do a Zoom with them. And you're gonna do either all or part of the VIP form. You're gonna create the VIP form. You're then gonna write them a handwritten note. Then after the power note gets to them, the PS in your power note is to invite them to your Facebook group. And then you're gonna formally invite them to your Facebook group. By the end of the Daily Dose, which is next week, by the way, next Friday is the last session of the Daily Dose. Sad face. That Here's the thing. You will have a book like this, your ambassador book, and you will have a Facebook group with 100 to 150 people in it. Maybe more. If you're like Jana Caudell, you'll have 5,000 in your Facebook group. If you're like Mary Story, who I'm going to talk about tomorrow, she has 80,000 in her group. She started her group on March 27th. March 20, 80,000 people. She started March 27th. Okay, that, right? That leads us into tomorrow. Tomorrow is we are honoring high school seniors across the world. So who is a high school senior? You know who, and I have to tell you, it's going to, it's going to be a show unlike any other. I, I, I mean, I've had tears. I've had laughter setting. We've been working on this for two weeks. The four seniors that you're going to hear from are amazing. The band story the, 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 uh, the recording artist that we're going to have on, the song that she sings, the story behind it is going to blow you away. And, and, oh, by the way, here's a hint. We're launching a book tomorrow, all on the Daily Dose. That's it. That's all we're doing. I'm just saying. You may want to check it out. Now, this is my friendly reminder to all of you who have started Facebook groups, and you're always looking for great content. Well, we're about to deliver great content. Trust me. This is for everybody from 11 years old to 111 years old. She doesn't cuss. I don't cuss. Anybody can hear this message. And I will tell you, my son is 11. He is on today. He is listening to this today. And Max can't wait to learn from Tara. And I will tell you that I can't wait to learn from Tara. So this is your reminder to start your watch party. If you don't know how to do that, go to share, which is right below here. Click on share. One of the options is start watch party. Click it. Go up to where it's already filled in the blank for the generosity generation. Hit the X so that goes away. Put your group in there. Or if you don't have a group yet, share it on your wall. Or share it on your business page. Or just figure out a place to share it. Please don't share it in the generosity generation group because you know what? We're already here. So bottom line is that's how you start your watch party. Do it now.
Okay. Now, are you kidding me with this? Dude, has the Daily Dose been like crazy awesome? I mean, it's like, look who we have today. Like, does it get any better? I keep going, can it get any better? And it's like, it always gets better. It just piles on top of awesome. So, Tara Carter, I will tell you, she's described as the rising superstar producing at the highest level using love, generosity, and appreciation. Tara Carter has years of experience helping others and the real estate business runs through her veins. She comes from a family of realtors and even helped form a startup company rehabilitating homes in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Her background also includes hospitality management, marketing, and new construction. Tara is endorsed by Michael J. Mayer. That should say like Tara is highly endorsed. Tara is uh, championed, ambassadored by Michael J. Mayer and is a founding mem member of his certified referral trainer, CRT Master Series. After attending Michael's Gen Gen events for the last four years, Tara was honored to share the stage on his mastermind panel in Las Vegas in 2017 with Tony Robbins, by the way, and Barbara Corcoran and a few others, and then asked to co-host the 2019 Referral Mastery Summit in Atlanta. Consistently voted the top ranked speaker at events, Tara's wisdom and teaching of the 7L system help business owners have a business that not only feeds their family, but also feeds their soul. Even though Tara has been given many wonderful titles by the business world, the titles that mean the most to her are daughter and godmother. Tara grew up in Coral Springs, Florida, and now lives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's all give it up. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Let's all get on our feet. Let's make it happen. Let's welcome Tara to the Daily Dose. Welcome. Thank you. Does that sound familiar? Because you wrote that for me. I wrote that for you. I I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I left out too many superlatives. It, yeah, it you wrote that. It should have. Uh, edit it. <laughs> thank you. I love it. And you know what I love about that is you just like implemented it. You didn't worry about it. You just, you just like, here you go. I don't want to think about this. And, and here we go. So I love yeah. that. I love it was that. great. And, it was from the, after the CRT. Yeah. Speaking of CRT, so I, I am genuinely curious. I know that it is not on here, and it's it. But why CRT? What made you decide to do CRT? What made you go down that path? And and like, what'd you get from it? Quickly, right? Don't you don't have to like a couple minutes. So well, one I wanted to go on to it because once I was introduced to the book and introduced to you. I just implemented, I mean, 80% of my business is seven levels of communication systems. So when I'm, you know, talk, when I talk about it all the time, and I basically live and breathe the systems because they're a big part in sources of my business. Why not become a certified trainer? And I know that I learn the most when I teach. So it's actually a, a win-win. <laughs> I get to teach others the systems and I get to learn them a, even more like embedded in me. Um, so that's pretty much why. I love it. So what's the number one aha or benefit that you've gotten out of uh, being a CRT, do you think? I know that's kind of a loaded question, but. Yeah, that def definitely is a loaded question. I would say it helps me more in my business, actually, by teaching the systems. I can't tell, I can't, I need to practice what I preach, right? So when mm -hmm. I'm teaching the systems, I better be doing them myself or I'm a horrible teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm just speaking well, it and it's, no, and it's no good. So there's, there's two wins there that you're talking about that I've seen in you, right? Tara, I mean, your last two years have been amazing. Like, like watching, watching you embody growth. You know, I, I always say there's no such thing as success or failure, only growth. That's exactly what you, I mean, like you, I, I should change you to the ambassador of growth, you know, because it, it, it's one of those where it's like, uh, you, you, and, and the beauty is that it's not just all the good that you share, you know, you share when you're not feeling all that great, you share the mistakes, the failures, the issues, the challenges, the thing, and, and you also share your successes, you know, so it's, it's, it's real, you know, it's growth. It's not just sharing the successes or sharing the failures. You're, you're sharing the growth and it, it's just been, uh, it's been amazing. Like it's been amazing. Well, I, yeah. I think that we have a lot more failures than, than successes for sure. But I think that the, in order to have the successes, you have to have the failures. So 
I hate when people just want to paint a pretty picture, like everything's so great and so amazing and, uh, and not sharing the truth. Like, no, things are not always so great. Yes. I've had a few meltdowns during this quarantine. <laughs> it's okay. Well, like, you, you look okay. like you've, you look like you've come out of it nicely, by the way. You look fresh. You look ready to go. You look beautiful. You look uh, you look energized, and, and that's all good. So now, on CRT, I'll just leave it at this, it, it, and this is kind of part of the growth that I've seen, is that, you know, the best-kept secret in the referral world is the best way to get referrals is to teach about referrals. You know, you're in front. You're talking about referrals. People remember that you talked about referrals, so you're instantly branding yourself uh, around referrals. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is that like by speaking about referrals, it forces you to learn more about how to get referrals, which forces you to implement, forces you to do these different things. And, you know, to be a great student, be a great teacher, to be a great teacher, be a great student. And, and so it's like, it forces you to like, when you read something or learn something, you're not learning it just to like entertainment you're learning it to teach it. And it's so, it's such a, a, a more robust way of teaching. And that's, that's really one of the things that I've, I've seen. And I, I, have, I have to throw this out here, kind of was a loaded question is, okay, everybody listen, no more emails, no more Facebook messages, no more posts below about how you become a CRT. Okay. We have a system for that. Go to 7lteachers.com right? I, I'm tired of email on Facebook. It's like, all right, you're listening right now. It's 7L, the number seven letter L, teachers.com. That's not a sales page. All you're doing is saying, you're raising your hand and saying, you know what? I would like to learn more about CRT. Go to 7Lteachers.com. And that's the last, we're going to talk about this for a while. So I love you. <laughs> I love my CRTs. You've seen Brandon on Tuesday, Toral on Wednesday, Tara today. So you're like all CRT might, hey, Get over it for a second and let's learn from where we are now. Let's learn from today's subject because today, uh, today is, is honestly right now, it's probably my favorite subject. And, you know, we're going to talk about structure. You know, we said mess or success. What does success look like in the quarantine times? And the first S of success was structure. And structure includes rituals, it includes time blocking, it, it just includes like waking up at the same time, going to bed at the same time, structure, give yourself some structure in an unstructured environment. So, you know, I guess the first thing, even before I ask, when did you start implementing the Sunday ritual? Like, like what, have you always been like structured, ritualized, time blocked, like, have you always been like that? Or has it been more like how I was when I first got into business, which is like, ah, let's go, you know, whatever it is, it is, you know? Um, yes, that way. <laughs> no, I, I was not. I, I mean, before real estate, I managed nightclubs and restaurants. So it was, my schedule was, was very off. It was just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, working all night, sleeping half the day, waking up and going back and doing it again. Um, so I personally, honestly did not, embody rituals until I read seven levels of communication and met you and the four enriching rituals was the first like start that I had. And I was like, Oh, there's like a system around this. Okay. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. And we all have rituals, right? I mean, people have a morning ritual. It just sucks for most people, right? It's just, it's, it's very demented. It's not regular. It, it's just like they have a morning ritual. They get up, they go pee, they check their phone, they get angry, they start posting political stuff or whatever it may be. <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's one of those where, you know, the, so the four enriching rituals. So we've got a morning Pre ritual. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Yeah. Right. Pre-leave, morning so, ritual, nightly ritual, and the Sunday night ritual. That's right. So the four enriching rituals. We, we already do these things. We already leave our office or leave or get done for the day if you're a home office person. And uh, that is the acronym is go home for, for that. That's a story for another day. And then the morning ritual, you guys know, right? I mean, Hal and I wrote a whole book on this, The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. It savers with an extra A. And uh, we teach that in 30 mornings. And we have a lot of you that I want to wave at, you early birds, right? Our early birds are in 30 mornings right now and kicking butt in that. So we have hundreds in that right now. Good for them. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if you're in 30 mornings, 
comment below. Just put 30 mornings, hashtag 30 mornings, and uh, just let me know who you are. And uh, I appreciate you being on today. So what we really want to focus on is, okay, we've got the early birds. Well, there's another group of people out there that include me and you. And these are the night owls, right? <laughs> Which, you know, the early bird gets the worm, you know, like the night owl gets the fun. You know what I mean? Who wants a freaking worm? I mean, I don't want a worm. I want the fun. Like the night owls are the fun crew, right? So when did you start implementing the Sunday night ritual? And then let's talk about kind of both of these, if you're okay with that, like the Sunday night yeah. ritual. Let's dive deep into that. And then, and then we can talk about the nightly ritual as well. So. Well, first I did the, the morning ritual and I went through your 30 mornings with Tony and Jen, which was so awesome. Um, so that was kind of my first introduction to the rituals. And one of them that I really liked when I was preparing to do the 30 mornings was the Sunday night ritual was kind of how it started. It was like, okay, tomorrow's Monday. I have to start early miracle morning. And uh, it was, it was, it was tough and I was nervous. So I was like, okay, how can I set my week up? And that's how it started with the Sunday night ritual. And that was three years ago. Mm. Two years ago? Three. Three years ago. Okay. And so, so what does, uh, so here's the thing, if you're okay with this kind of being a conversation is I'll talk a little bit about my Sunday night ritual. You talk a little bit about your Sunday night ritual and maybe we, we talk about the similarities and we talk about the differences and, and that's the beauty, right? Is it's, you're not doing my Sunday night ritual. You've taken the basis of what we talk about and you've created your own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, and, and that's, that's the 30 mornings too, right? You're, you're not doing Tony and Jen's morning ritual. You're not doing my morning ritual. You're not doing uh, Neil or Shalee's, if you're on the West Coast, ritual. You're actually creating your own ultimate morning ritual. The nice thing about, you know, what we talk about with the Sunday night ritual and the nightly ritual is we don't give you art. It's, it's, we help you create your own. And that makes it far more powerful. So, so what is it, you know, give me a brief overview of, of what your routine looks like. Well, I think that it's important to note too, like Sundays are for planning. And I noticed that when you start your Sundays with an actual plan, your week goes by so much smoother, like a lot mm. smoother. So I just followed up the, the five steps, which first is checking my schedule. So I was using um, the full focus planner, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a quarterly planner. I'm trying to second quarter. I'm trying a different planner for second quarter. And what I loved about it is there's a weekly preview. So I look at the schedule to see what exactly do I have coming up in the week um, so that I know what I'm planning for. And before I, I even dive deep into what's coming up in the week, I have to reflect on what happened this previous week. And I must say, sometimes I struggle with it. And I'm not saying that everybody has to like go get a planner um, that is the full focus planner. But however, there are a really great um, few questions in here that they ask which first is looking at your, my biggest wins. So looking at the past week that I just had and, and writing down three to five of my major accomplishments from the past week. And I have to be honest, sometimes I'm, I've been, you know, a little down in the dumps through, through this and I'm like, well, nothing great happened this week. And then I go back and I'm like, well, no, that was great. Like that was a win. And it may have been a small win. However, a win is a win. So um, I look at the, I write those three, three to five things down of major accomplishments. And then I also um, have an after action review, which was referring to the last week, the three big rocks that I wanted to accomplish because the week prior I set up, okay, what's my three rocks that I want to accomplish this week in order for my week to be a success. So I look at the three rocks that I had from the previous week and I see, did I, did I, did I accomplish that? How far did I get? What percentage did I also get? And that the percentage thing I actually got from this where it says like, how far did you get percentage completed from that and mm -hmm. what worked and what didn't work? Um, I think that, and what will I keep? What will I improve? What will I start or what will I stop doing based mm -hmm. on whether or not I hit those big rocks from the week before? Um, mm -hmm. And then the fourth is I look at the weekly overview of the actual week and I list any important events that I have deadlines and tasks that are coming up in the coming week. And I break them down personally and professionally because there's different tasks that we have and we need to take care of ourselves first before we can take care of anything professionally anyways. So um, once I broke those down, I actually go down further. Um, so it's like, 
breaking them down personally and professionally. And then the next day I have, it's a kind of like a week overview. So I'll just kind of jot down what do I have that's big that's coming up that week. Um, and then I'll, and then I'll actually plan what my weekly three objectives are, what my big three rocks are for that week coming up and then a self care planner. So the self care planner is, I think really, really important. So that's where I'm going to brainstorm in the categories about, and then schedule my rejuvenation on my daily agenda pages for the week in each. So, uh, what's my plan for my sleep? Um, I intend to do my yoga. Um, I do like a seven minute app that I have for yoga before I go to sleep. Um, what am I going to be eating? So I'll usually typically, I put like, you know, bring my lunch meat and I'll plan out kind of the days that I'm, what I'm going to be eating, um, when I'm going to be moving, which is when I'm going to be sweating. Uh, mm-hmm. and I just got a bicycle. So I've been riding the bicycle and then who I'm going to connect with. I've been intending to connect with as many, uh, not just professionals and, and business conversations also with friends that I just kind of lost touch with and then relax. What am I going to do to relax? So by that's just the step one of the weekly preview. And I find that just by doing that is, is such a game changer. Do you do the same for your first step, like the weekly preview? Yeah. You just need to drop the mic. Like, like there were only a thousand pearls in, in what you delivered right there, you know? Um, so, so mine is sweet, right? So sweet dreams is, is the combination of, the Sunday night ritual and the nightly ritual. On Sunday night, I'm gonna combine the two into sweet dreams and then it's just dreams Monday through Thursday or Monday through Sunday. So sweet is just like what you do, schedule. Let's look at the schedule, right? And, and I, think that's, I think that's such a, a powerful first thing. And it's not just a professional schedule, it's, it's personal schedule too. Like when does Max have practice? And a lot of times I'm coaching those, so when do I have practice? Uh, you know, when are the workouts happen? And then, um, then the weather, we're going to look at the weather. And, and, you know, this really came about from more my personal side than the professional side. But it's like, you know, rain is going to affect certain things. Bad weather is going to affect certain things. Uh, Hot is going to affect certain things. So I look at the weather. And then the first E is the eating plan. What does it look like through the week, and that's very similar to yours, is, is like, all right, what do I need to buy from the store? Or what does Sherry need to buy from the store? And like, what are we going to eat through the week? And right now it's big time keto friendly because the first four weeks of COVID-19, I lived up to the 19. I didn't quite gain 19, but holy cow, I was a bloated pig. Now I'm on my way back down to a more healthy, <laughs> more healthy arena. But but it was like, I was so out of ritual, you know, but the nice thing is when you know a ritual, like, you know, you can get into a ritual very quickly. You can adapt quicker. I believe if you understand the concept of rituals, you know, you're in a, okay, what's my ritual? You know, looking around, it's like, oh crap, what's my ritual? And, and then the, the second E in suite is the exercise plan. So what's the exercise plan for the week? And, and for like Max, we would lay out or we would like, all right, what are the practices? You know, for me, it's going to be the walking or it's going to be the practices. What am I going to wear? That kind of thing. And then the T is tie it all together, right? We're going to tie it all together. So we're going to, we're going to lay out the outfits for the week, literally Monday through Saturday. We're going to, uh, and by the way, the outfits are both personal for the workouts, for whatever it may be, and the professional. So the days I need to wear a tie or the days I need to wear something that needs to be dry cleaned, I know where it's at. The other thing is the healthcare, right? So massage, haircut, all those planned out as, as far as we can. And then uh, Max's outfit. So it's school or regular wear. And w- he wears a uniform ba- for baseball, which is usually far different than what he wears, you know, during the day. And I have to tell you that helped us a ton during basketball season, because what we would do is when he went to school, we would have him wear sweats with shorts under it, and then he would wear his basketball t-shirt with a hoodie over it. So guess what? Two and one right there. He's ready for practice as soon as he gets done with school, but notice that takes planning ahead. And so you've got the eating plan, the exercise plan, 
and then tying it all together, which is just, all right, what needs to be done during the week? And uh, what are the outfits? What are the different to-dos we have? Um, do I need to schedule a self-care thing? And then I'm done with my Sunday night ritual, which takes the first time you do it, it'll take an hour. The second time you do it, it'll be 40 minutes. The third time you do it, it'll be 20 minutes. It kind of, it kind of, so you know, it's so true. And I'll never forget when I was, when I was reading this at the Sunday night ritual. And uh, when I first implemented it, I was like, check the weather. That's so silly. Like, why am I going to check the weather? And then I bought a um, wardrobe hanger, which I can submit the link in it. And I've had so many friends or if they're watching this that have implemented this as well. And if anybody follows me on my social media, on my Instagram, hold me accountable because you will never see me miss a Sunday of not doing the Sunday care routine. So, mm. and the wardrobe though I liked is because not only did I actually plan for what the weather is going to be. So having the wardrobe that's already laid out on a stand that I got for like 25 bucks from Wayfair. Um, it's so awesome. And then I actually implemented to where my gym clothes are on the other side of the room. So I don't really have an excuse when I get up, I don't have an excuse. Like they're there. The planning's already been done. And as you know, I wear a uniform, so it makes mm -hmm. it really easy for me to kind of get ready. But the easiest way to avoid any like Monday closet craze is just to plan your wardrobe in advance. It's the craziest thing. I feel like I'm 10 years old again, <laughs> but well, it, it, and it, it sets my week up for success. And I think the, the wardrobe, the sticking to a wardrobe too, like I only wear black, pink and white typically, um, it makes it so easy. And I'm not saying sometimes, like, let's say that we plan the wardrobe and we're like, this has definitely got to be Monday. This has to be Tuesday. Unless I have a big meeting coming up, I don't, sometimes I'll move things around. However, I'm not sitting in front of the closet being like, well, what am I going to wear today? I don't really feel like that. And then I'm running around crazy. That's gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's been well, gone. <laughs> like, yeah, several great ideas within that. You know, one is, is find a uniform. You know, if, if people notice, like, this is what I've worn every, every day of the daily dose, other than a few in the beginning, we did spirit day. And then I did the t-shirt with the bigger logo on it. But, but it's like, have a uniform. And I, and when, I, when, you know, I was in Kansas city selling real estate every day, I had a uniform. It was basically a suit with a mock turtleneck. And it depended on, I wore short sleeve mock turtleneck, which I didn't even know existed before I was in real estate or a long sleeve, depending on was it hot or cold. And that was it. And I'll tell you, a t-shirt under a sport coat, like a little bit of Miami Vice look, I hate to even throw that back. But <laughs> like that was my uniform. And, and guess what? It was comfortable. It worked in any environment. I could get a surprise listing appointment or whatever it may be and show up and be ready. And that was my yeah. uniform. So have a uniform, pick your look and figure out what works. Here's the other thing is, is, you know, have, have a backup for surprise days. Maybe for the guys, you have a sport coat in your office or you have a sport coat that's just ready. Like you have a backup outfit just in case or a backup sport coat just in case. I have this just in case. fleece is in my studio. So I literally come in. I wear a black T-shirt every day, right? I mean, I just do black T-shirt every day, right? Every day. And whatever goes over it goes over it. In this case, it's, it's going to be the fleece, but the fleece is hanging up. I put it on, I go on the show. And it, uh, here's the other thing a uniform does is that it puts you in the proper mental state. Like when I put this uniform on, it's like, let's go. Right. I mean, it's like, let's go, let's make it happen. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm like, let's go. I'm on stage. Right. It's like, you know, I feed the energy. I feel the energy when I put the fleece on, it's like a superhero. outfit. <laughs> so, Are you enjoying the Daily Dose? Want to connect with thousands of other business owners that are winning the referral game while working from home right now? Head over to the Generosity Generation Facebook group. Connect with leaders, visionaries, and business owners from all over the world. Go to www.joingengen.com. That's www.joingengen.com. Let me ask you that first. What has been the biggest advantage to having this ritual, the Sunday night ritual, for you? Uh, it makes me more efficient. 
uh, when I have a routine that I follow on Sunday to set my week up for success, it reduces the need to make decisions every day. So like each day, and it enables me to know exactly what tasks I need to do each day without having to contemplate it or decide or think too much. So, and then when I finish with one task, I know what is going to come next without much thought to it. So it's, it's really just makes me more efficient, to be honest. And it, and it, it, it sounds like it helps you with decision fatigue. Right. The more decisions yeah, we make. Does. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, that's why that's why the spouse yells at the spouse when they say, you know, what do you want for dinner? You know, and, and the spouse yells because it's like one more decision that he or she has to make during the day. And it's and it's like it, you know, you just you get to the end of your rope. Here's the thing: the more decisions you make, the worse decisions you'll make. The less decisions you make, the better decisions you make. So if you make all the decisions on what you're going to wear and all these little, like, tiny decisions that you don't know are eating away at you, if you make all those Sunday night, you're going to be a better thinker. You're going to be more effective and efficient, like Tara said. And here's the thing that I'm going to tell you. You're going to be happier. You're going to be happier. You're going to be happier because, you know what, it's done. How about we don't even ask what's for dinner? What if we knew on Sunday night what was for dinner on Thursday night? Because you know what? We've got practice until 6.30. We're probably going to eat out, probably be 7 o'clock. You know, where do you want to go? All right, Max says Panda Express. Me and mom go, oh, please, dear God. And yet we go to Panda Express because Max picked it on Sunday night. You know, it is what it is. You got to be a compromise when it comes to a family. But Most definitely. So – I love that. I have to that. add though, yeah. I think yeah. that it also creates uh, structure in our life and it, it also saves time and time is our most valuable resource. So if time is the most precious asset at our disposal because once it's lost, it's not, it's non-retrievable. You're not getting it back. So mm -hmm. by following the routine, we free up time that would otherwise be spent on planning, decision-making, preparation. And I feel like our routine predetermined our schedule, which allows us to use our time more efficiently. That's awesome. And how has life changed for you since you've mastered, like you no longer are a novice at the Sunday night ritual. You're, you've mastered the Sunday night ritual. And, oh, yeah. you know, how long did it take you to master it, do you think? Probably to be consistent with it, um, probably a year. Yeah. Like, no joke. Yeah. Like I was, I was in and out for the year and then, and then I would say for the, at least for the last year and a half, for sure. I don't think I've ever missed a Sunday. Even say, if I was out all day on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> which, which sounds like a recent uh, recollection. So <laughs> yeah, no, no, not too recent pre COVID. Yeah. So the, um, so what if, what if you did it like four weeks in a row and you had somebody like doing it with you? Do you think you would have mastered it quicker if you would have had like a coach or a mentor or, or somebody to like guide you through it? Do you think in four weeks you could have, you could have like gotten 90% of the way to mastery or do you think it's a longer process than that? No, I think that if I sincerely had somebody doing it with me and I knew that I could share, it sounds so simple, right? It sounds really simple. Like, oh, I could check the weather. I can write down what my big rocks are for the week. It, it, it really wasn't. So if I had somebody that was like the Miracle Morning uh, with Jen and Tony that I had that actually introduced me to seven level or introduced me to the Sunday night routine, I know that I would have mastered it a lot sooner. And I think it would have been more fun as well because I would have known that I had other people to do it along with me and we can share like I love when I get tagged with people who bought the wardrobe thing that I have and they're like Sunday night setting up my routine thanks Tara and like that that like that makes me so happy and I know that they're not staying consistent with it and I know they would if they had something like the four-week program that we had with Tony and Jen. Mm. So how has life changed for you since mastering your Sunday night ritual? How has life changed? Like what, what have you noticed in your day-to-day -day life that maybe wasn't there before? Um, more time, more mm -hmm. time to use it efficiently instead of not having to make decisions. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I have too many options, I could sit there forever <laughs> and yeah. 
it's just, so I would say more time and it's created good habits. Um, my self care has gone up since I really and truly implemented the Sunday night ritual. Yeah. And, uh, what's interesting is, uh, I was in lab coat agents with Tristan Ahumeda literally right before this. And, uh, somebody was like, Oh, I love my miracle morning. Is there something like the miracle evening? And, uh, I'm here to tell you that yes, there is like, literally launching right now is sweet dreams. We're going to teach sweet dreams. How many of you would like to learn more about the Sunday night ritual and the nightly ritual and put this into, uh, into your life right now? Just put sweet dreams in the comments below, but don't stop there. Listen to this. Go to 30evenings.com. Now, normally this class is $4.97, it's $99. I'm not selling you anything. It, you know why it's not free? I, I talked about this with 30 mornings. It's not free, so you'll show up, right? But it's $99. It's like so cheap. So you can go to 30evenings.com. That makes sense. 30mornings.com, 30evenings.com. Can you change your life in 30 evenings? Yes, you can. Can you achieve your dreams in 30 days? Yes, you can. How do you do that? you take sweet dreams. So sweet is the Sunday night ritual and then dreams. I'll just help you with the acronym real quick. And we'll talk a little bit about that with Tara is, you know, dreams is D is for dim, dim time. What is your time that you're going to shut off the computer and shut off the phone and, and start to go to bed, right? You like get ready for bed. I never heard of get ready for bed until I met women, like women get ready for bed. Like, you know what guys do? They collapse into bed right? So it's like, you know, dim time. It's a very smart thing to have. If you're going to go to bed at 10, your dim time is probably 930. So then the R is read, right? The beautiful thing about Sweet Dreams class is you don't have to pick up a book. The actual reading excerpt is in the Sweet Dreams journal. So you read in the journal. It's all in one journal. The Sweet Dreams journal alone is probably worth 497. Yay. Yeah, yeah. And just so you know, I borrowed a little bit from the full focus planner. So I'm, I'm throwing it out there that, you know what I did? I looked at the bulletproof journal. I looked at the full focus planner. I looked at the battle planner. I looked at like all the planners and it's like, all right, don't need that. Don't need that. You know, what do we need? And it's like present, past and future. You, you guys don't need it. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm explaining this. But anyway, <laughs> I looked at all that and it's just like the best way to look at things is Look at your present, look at the past, and then look at the future. So when you go to planning, it, it, anyway, it's like uh, feel, uh, feel uh, I'm sorry, feel felt found, right? I understand how you feel. We've had other clients who have felt the same way. And what they found is if they took my advice, they got what they needed or whatever. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good way to look things. Then the E is for evaluate. And I'm telling you, this section alone, will change your life. Evaluate. One of the things that we don't do enough of is, is take an overview. What do we need to celebrate or congratulate ourselves for? What, do we, what frustrated us today? What do we appreciate from the day? And we have a whole other set of grade eights in there. So, um, and then the A is for affirm, the bedtime affirmation. Um, you've heard Shalee talk about it. You heard Polly talk about it. We've talked about it here. The bedtime affirmation, you're going to just bedtime affirmation, and then you're going to have a section for your top five or six affirmations. And then the M is for meditate. And the meditation's simple, right? It's like, like, like Tara's doing right there. This is not a guided meditation. This is breathing techniques. This is super simple pre-sleep meditation. What if I told you I had a secret to help you sleep better. And what if I told you that if you had better sleep, you'd be less stressed, you'd be, your immune system would be stronger, you would think better, you would be happier, you'd have better sex, you'd be more productive, you would, like, what if I told you that by having better sleep, it, what if I told you that if you had better sleep, you'd have a better morning ritual? Like, it's all true. That's why we created Sweet Dreams. And then the S in dreams is sleep. And uh, that's the focus is, is how do we get better sleeps, you know, and how do we have more sweet dreams? And the way to do that is, is have rituals because when your body knows it's coming, it's going to perform better. And what if I told you that I truly believe that sleep is the next untapped potential 
in the super producers and the high achievers? What if we could use sleep as a tool for success? And that's what Sweet Dreams is really all about. I believe that eight hours can be utilized to tap into the other one or 2% of our brain that we're not using at all. And uh, I've done it. I literally did it last night. And I'm telling you, my team at the morning huddle was like at the end, they all go, wow. Like, wow. I mean, when it's your executive staff and they've heard you for 10 years talk about stuff and they still, you know, they're like, wow, that's what we're doing. It's like, anyway, I went off on a tangent there. So <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> I, I, the only thing I, I want to add to is I feel yeah. like when for the Sunday night routine, the nightly routine, the morning routine, like all of these routines, they build momentum too. So it's, we all know when you do the same things, um, um, retributionally, it, it builds momentum and, and making it easier to per persist. And that's why going to the gym gets easier the more frequently you do it. So I feel like momentum is a huge factor when it comes to ensuring success and following a routine helps build that momentum, which also leads to building self-confidence. And when we adhere to a routine and really stick with it, it helps build self-confidence um, it gives us a, a, a sense of tremendous satisfaction and it kind of provides us with like the fuel to continue our routine and reap the benefits too um, that are associated with it. And a lack of self-confidence is one of the main reasons people find it difficult to make changes in their lives for the better. Um, and I also feel like it saves us money. <laughs> definitely saves you money, right? Like when I'm doing my, right, my meal prepping, uh, it definitely saves me some money. And it, when I stick to uniform for my clothing, I, I think I definitely save some money because it, when I wear black, it's like, do I wear black or black today? Like nobody's going to know if I wear the same black dress three days in a row, just change the heels. <laughs> um, but I, I just found that the most successful people all wear a uniform, you know? I mean, you wear you, uh, since I've known you, you always had a uniform on on stage. Uh, Gary Keller, Steve Jobs, pretty much Diana Kokos, like Zuckerberg, a lot of successful right? people Zuckerberg, all, right? yeah, they Zuckerberg all wear a uniform. A... So I was like, I'm going to wear a uniform <laughs> and it just makes it easier. So I save money that way too. Well, I wish my uniform looked as good as yours does. So, <laughs> so here's the thing is Howard Brenton would love you, by the way, Howard Brenton, star power star, his colors were black and pink. So it was oh, pink, perfect. Yeah, pink and black. So it, it would it was black with a pink star. Uh, and then the, the stars would wear a black shirt and it would have the pink star on it. And uh, so black and pink is is very, very powerful. So power colors and the pink definitely goes with your flamingo very, very well. Um, Gotta have that. So I think that the big thing is is that um, do you do anything Monday through like Thursday? And that's something I want to tell everybody with sweet dreams. Sweet dream starts on Sunday night. You do the Sunday night ritual and then the nightly ritual. And it only goes Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday, you will do the nightly ritual with coaches. In fact, Tara uh, will be one of your coaches. And Polly will be one of your coaches. And I will tell you that if I could have had Tara and Polly as my coaches when I was 20 years old, who knows? Like, I, I would have been the first to, like, I don't know, like, have a – settlement on mars you know what i mean so it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it so uh they're coaching it and so then friday night you can stay up as late as you want saturday night you can stay up as late there's no class there's no struck you you do what you want friday and saturday night sunday night show up back for the class do your sunday night ritual do your uh, nightly ritual and then you're going to do that monday through thursday so you do have a break in there but that, that I think the most powerful thing about all of our classes that I love is I'm not trying to make anybody do a 180 degree turn. These are the one degree tweaks that make all the difference. Yeah, Tara. One degree. <laughs> one degree tweak. That is, is, since I met you, that has always stuck in my head. One degree tweaks every day. It doesn't have to be a full 180 degrees. One degree tweak. One degree. Did I get, did I tweak at least one thing today? One degree. It doesn't have to be like, I think we, we beat ourselves up sometimes when we attend, we do something and we don't get the results right away. And we don't realize that it's just one degree tweaks each day. That's it. That's it. Only if you want to be 38 times better by the end of the year, you know, that's yeah. the thing is, is you can't get 38 times better in December. It doesn't work that way. 
But what you can do is get one degree better every day. And if you do that 365 days, you'll be at almost 38 X better. And uh, that's the beauty. Like we're not trying to break anybody. We're trying to bend your comfort zone. I always see the, the comfort zone as an egg, right? Like an eggshell or a bubble. And it's like, we don't want to, it's like a, imagine chewing gum, right? If you blow too hard on the bubble, which is, is like doing more than a one degree tweak, you burst the bubble. And that's what happens with your comfort zone is you do something, you break, and then you even have less gum, right? So then you chew. Here's what you do with a one degree tweak. You just blow a little harder and it goes, and your comfort zone is a little bit bigger. You're a little stronger. You're a little better. You're a little faster. You're a little smarter. And guess what? You're a little richer. You're a little happier. I love that. I'm so, I just have to say, I'm so grateful for some of the things, the most of the things that I've implemented are all thanks to you. Like, honestly, pretty much all of it. Wow. Well, thank you for that. You know that. the first one I ever implemented? Oh, and I was no. so proud when, um, when um, Max did it at, at the retreat, which was the do it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the first one. Right. Yeah. The do it now. Yeah. I, I have to, somebody just, John... Uh, Masillo and somebody else was just talking about literally they uh, did the, oh, you know what? We need to share, uh, Sherry, Mandy, we need to share the do it now sheet, the secret strategy. Oh, I saw that. That guy posted yeah. it and I was like, I don't have yeah. one of those. Yeah, we need to post that in the, you know what? I promised that. But the problem is it is so powerful. Like it, it's like, I'm, I worry about people because it's like, if you do this, you will be changed forever. Do you really want to be like a machine? Do you really want to be super efficient? Because, and you have to really like, I mean, that's a thing. Because once you embed, do it now, there will be some frustration. There will be, so you will have to learn not to be overcommitted. You like, like do it, do it now is, yeah. Jesse Gomez, it's, one of our coaches. And it clients. sounds so silly. Yeah, it, it, I, it, it might be the, and you got to realize I have studied affirmations for 20 years. It might be the most powerful affirmation that there is. Even, I, can I mean, agree everybody, with that. yeah, everybody says I am, right? Everybody's like, I am is the most powerful. Like, I am whatever. I am a best selling. No, because the pro, there's a lie. There's a little tweak in your brain that doesn't quite believe it. Do it now is a demand, it's a command, and it's coming from you, which makes, it, it's like, you know, I have so many stories of that. One time I, I just wanted to go home and it was like, I didn't want to put a sign out, you know, a, a for sale sign. And we had the listing, it just, it didn't have a sale sign. And it was just like, do it now. Oh crap, all right, so I turn around, I go, I put the sign in the yard as I'm driving. Beep, beep, hey, is that house available on, you know, it's like, yes why do you ask it's like we got to see it multiple offers next day you know ended up sell sold over asking price that couple Score. who called was a relocation couple only in town that night they were leaving that night and it, they wouldn't have seen it they wouldn't have bought it and see it and you pass it on to your son because when i was interviewing him about his charity I was like, what advice do you have for other kids? And he's like, do it now. And I was like, your father would be so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about the toys. Toys are at the, the maximum Yeah, the toys benefit. are taught. Yeah, the benefit event. And, uh, you know, what would you tell somebody else who, who was thinking about doing, a, you know, a Toys R Us or a benefit event? And, he, you know, in his cute little 10-year-old voice, he's like, do it now. You know, it's like, yeah. oh. And I didn't see that until later. Like you, yeah. thank God I'll, you had I'll filmed it. it. So everybody yeah. else could watch it. That yeah. was really good. That was, was like, awesome. Yeah, he's going to be so proud of you. So let's say somebody's considering doing the Sweet Dreams class. What would mm -hmm. you tell them? What would you tell them? What would you suggest to them? What would you say? Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that was too easy. That was that was like too easy. It, but it is amazing how often do it now is just is just the answer because what happens is we have these shoulds and it's like, I should do this. I should do this. I should do this. And it's like, if you just do it now, then it's done or it's at yeah. least mostly done. And, mostly and, done. Yeah. Yeah. 
it, it, well, it, I would say that if anybody wants to is thinking about signing up, I feel like not only is it going to help us all kind of achieve our goals together, I think it's also going to help us keep us on track for success as, mm. as a whole. And, and weirdly enough, it'll probably free up a little bit of your time too, um, in a positive way. So, and help reduce some stress and facilitate uh, relaxation. And save you some money, right? Yeah, and save you I some mean, money. Yeah. And Build I, I, some you, self-confidence. <laughs> I always forget to uh, always forget the, the the money one. It's like it really does save you a lot of money because you're you're not you're not like buying the the tie of the week, so to speak, you know, or the tie of the month. Uh, you you know what you're doing. So I love that. And so here's the thing: is like your last two years have been amazing. You know, I mean, what what was your production two years ago? Like two years ago? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd have to go back. Yeah. Um, so, and then, so what if it stepped up the last couple of years? Uh, 30 million. Yeah. So probably at least by 10 million. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. You know, it, yeah. it, it's been, it's been amazing to, to just really watch what's happened. You know, you basically tripled your business in two years. Um, and, and it's, and it, and like you said, in a private car, you know, easier, easier than like you had thought, right? I mean, it was like, you became much more efficient and much more efficient. And I think it's yeah. because of the, the rituals and, and the routines and, and do I fall off sometimes and struggle with them a hundred percent and I'm very transparent about it. Um, and that's why I love the idea of accountability and, 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 a, and a group around it too. And I think I, I know that the reason for the big jumps is because I run my business based on generosity. And I've mm -hmm. just been full into the generosity generation and um, following the model. So we've never paid for a lead before. So that's mm -hmm. the other beauty of it. The only thing we have to get creative on now is the events. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do virtual houses. events, virtual that's events, fine. online events. Toral and Johnny shared a great one yesterday. And then they did yeah, it I heard. last night was the trivia night. And what a beautiful idea. And they got a referral last night. I mean, it's just I like, that. that's, that's, it, it's so beautiful. So um, I will tell you, I, I, I want to celebrate with you on something. I, and it, like this, I was going to just like have you sign off and then share it with, with the generosity generation. But today is a really big day for me. And, and uh, so I'm going to celebrate. Can I celebrate a little bit? Yeah, I, let's celebrate. Okay. All right. You, you reminded me that of this earlier when you were talking about, and thank God for Sherry, she ran and, and, and got what I, she figured out through my sign language, what to go get. And so today is, is May 21st. Is that right? Yeah. Today's May 21st. So May 21st of 2012, I was asked by my mentor, Zig Ziglar, to endorse his book. Now I want you to think about that, right? So, so, you know, hundreds of people have asked Zig to endorse, endorse their books and, and Zig endorsed 7 L, but like, who did he have endorse his book? It was, it, it was like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like kind of emotional right now. Think about it, but imagine Zig Ziglar saying, Hey, listen, I'd really like to have your endorsement on my book, you know? And that happened on May 21st, 2012. And, and this is the book, right. That came out. Right. I love Great that. Book. Yeah, and it was his last book, Tara. Was it? Last book before he passed away. And it's Born to Win. And up here is Dave Ramsey's endorsement. Up here is Dave, Ram uh, wait, no, Seth Godin, right? You've got Seth Godin's endorsement at the top. But I want to show you something. Look at this, right? So you open this up. It says praise for Born to Win. You know who the number one endorsement is? Michael, Michael J. Mayer. Yeah, and here's what's really funny. Uh, on page three is Dave Ramsey. Yeah, baby. Dave Ramsey, take that, we baby. Dave page one. Oh, yeah. Well, we. Oh, we, my God. I love that. We know the truth. Congratulations. So. That's huge. So, it was today, May 21st, 2012. So, exactly. I was trying uh, eight, to find his spark. I mean, that's huge. Could we park on that for a minute? That's a, yeah. that's a really big deal. Yeah. 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 So, I like today's yeah. date. You have to put that on. Um, you have to circle a reminder in your calendar that you never forget. You kind of celebrate that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, May twenty first, twenty twelve. It it it's a uh, it was a magical day. I mean, it's just like, and you got to realize, Tara, that was in twenty twelve. My book came out in twenty ten. 2009 really but 2010 so the book had only been out a couple of years and oh, wow. uh it's 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 zig zig like you said he's my third mentor right patrick j Mayer, howard brenton and then and then zig ziglar and you know he was always like i mean he was always so encouraging right i mean it's just like michael you're you've got big things in store for you michael you the reason i have an audio audio book it is because of Zig Ziglar, right? The seven L audio book. I was like, I, he's like, Michael, you work with relators. That's his pronoun. That's his pronunciation or enunciation. So you work with relators. They go to automobile university every single day, Michael. You got to get yourself an audio book. <laughs> so it's Zig Ziglar, right? So two weeks later, I'm in Orlando, Florida, recording what became the audiobook. And, you know, I mean, nice thing is he gave me the advice. The other nice thing is I implemented everything that guy said, you know? Well, yeah, it's yeah. Zig Ziglar. I would too. Yeah. Did it, I mean, it, you can have everything you want in life if you just help enough others get what they want in life. And that's what Absolutely. 7L is all about, you know? I'm going to post in the group. I was trying to look for it. I thought it would be here. Um, I got a letter in the mail this week. Um, so one of the courses I know that you're in right now is bold. Mm -hmm. So this is my ninth bold. Wow. And when we have the in-person meeting, we write a letter to our future self about mm. everything we accomplished in the last year. Wow. And so it was dated May 15th, 2020. I wrote it May 15th, 2019. Okay. And in that letter, um, I wrote that I would speak at CRT in Atlanta. At RMS or referral mastery. Yeah. Summit. And I didn't even, you didn't even ask me yet. And I got it. And I was like, wow. Oh my God, I did that. Wow. Seriously. <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture of it. That's awesome. That's, and I wrote uh, it a year ago. It's, it was so cool. It was like, I mean, oh RMS God. was in its planning stages. So the fact that you had, I mean, that, that's, that's amazing, right? I mean, RMS I know, I was trying to look for it. I'm going to send you a picture. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the idea of writing a letter to your future self. I love that idea. There used to be an app where you could do it. You would type it in. And then on like December, the future date, it would pop up you know, and say, you know, did you achieve this goal or did this happen? Like a, like a vision. Thing, oh, I like that. Visualization thing. So yeah, I think sometimes like once the year goes by, we think like, oh, well, I, I'm not where I wanted to be, or I, maybe I didn't accomplish this. And then looking at the letter that I wrote, I, I mean, I accomplished about 80% of the things and I'm like, wow, okay. Like have grace for yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. and just, and just appreciate the little things. One degree tweaks. <laughs> One degree tweak. It works every time. And so, wow, like this was awesome. This, I mean, like page of notes all yeah, over the place. And uh, so I, I will tell you, thank you so much, Tara. You're, 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 you're such a beautiful person inside and out and uh, just love you, love you to bits. And uh, man, I, I just, uh, you know, I used to say, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, but the present is pretty amazing by itself, you know? Well, we're so, just getting started. <laughs> exactly. We're just getting started. So thank you so much for being our guest on the Daily Dose of Positivity and Productivity. We love you. Thank you. I love you guys too. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here for today's Daily Dose. I'm telling you, tomorrow is two weeks in the making. 2020 senior, high school senior graduation special. We will have four seniors speaking. We have a gal who adopted 80,000 people in the last month and a half. I can't wait for you to hear Mary's story story. And then we are launching a band. We are launching the new national anthem tomorrow. And then just to top it off, hey, how about a book? How about we just launch a book tomorrow? What do you think about that? Sure. Let's have some Why fun. not? So that's tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you implement, make sure you do, make sure you're positive, make sure you're productive, and we will see you tomorrow on The Daily Dose.
Thanks, everybody. Bye.